Caddis Maximus here. This time I'm reviewing the 1AC or ONIAC. If we can get this lifted up, this thing weighs 55 pounds. This is a no mess around 2 kilowatt or 2000 watt. This is rated at 16 amps by 120 volts. An ONIAC or 1AC uh, tends to have a pretty good. Con uh, I find these larger ones from this brand because they seem to have better sales in the industrial and higher power markets. These types of isolation transformers and other reviews I've done of like constant voltage transformers are available from really small sizes like that power var, which is just a little 4 amp version, uh, all the way up through just any type of industrial size application. I used to work in a machine shop. They had a 100,000 watt isolation transformer, a huge dresser size transformer bolted to the floor in the corner of the shop. And there just isn't a lot of videos about this type of equipment, this power conditioning equipment, from somebody who's more of a lay person. I'm definitely a lay person. Uh, a lay person's kind of view and what they kind of get them for. And, and because there just is so few videos about these types of pieces of equipment, it's really surprising. Even in the modern day of YouTube, you know, you can look on YouTube and find tens of thousands of videos and tool reviews, tens of thousands of vlogs and prank videos and all sorts of stuff. But... A lot of the reviews I try to do, in addition to, you know, Harbor Freight Tools, because they at least give me something you know, resembling uh, views, there just is very few videos about these types of power conditioning equipment. So I've always kind of wanted to do that. And a lot of my thing about my channel is just to put up videos for other people who are in the kind of weird, esoteric stuff like I am. Not just tools, but, you know, power conditioners, which are a form of electrical tool. And that's kind of why I make all these videos, and that way people can have a better idea when they find these used or look at them on eBay. Anyway, ONIAC is known for much larger and heavier duty types of isolation transformers, and they are indeed very high quality. Uh, they're not made in America. They used to be, so if you buy an older one off of eBay, most likely it will be a, an American-made one. They're still just as good wherever they're made now. Um, but I did want to point that out, that they used to be American-made, just like APC used to be American-made. Now, you know, of course, it's overseas. As I said, this is a 2-kilowatt uh, model, weighs 55 pounds. It's a CC1120 is the particular model of this one. Uh, one AC isolation transformers, or ONIAC, I have a terrible time pronouncing, you know, getting name, manufacturer names right, uh, are known for being very quiet. And they have a couple of unique features, which does set them apart from many other isolation transformers. They call it a virtual Kelvin ground. But what they do is they have a sheet of metal. Since this is an isolation transformer, it's a transformer. You know, it's a big block of metal with some coils of wire wrapped around it. Because when you have an alternating current, uh, you can do something magical with an alternating current. Which is be able to increase or decrease the voltage through something known as a transformer. To do that with a direct current, it requires some a lot of special uh, electronics, where all you need is some iron and wire, and you can convert, you can step up or step down uh, voltages with the transformer. You can also have them be one-to-one, -one, which means it doesn't increase or decrease, but since it's one coil wire wrapped around another one, as this one uh, alternates, it will induce uh, the same voltage and the coil that it's next to, but that it's not, the wires aren't physically touching each other. So what that means is that you're isolated. That's where the term isolation comes from. And because of that fact, they reduce, a, they are absolutely awesome for blocking uh, noise, electromagnetic interference, that type of stuff, because say high frequency noises, uh, just when they, go into the coil, they try to expand, I should say, expand the magnetic field and that acts as like a damper. So they work really, really well from all forms of electrical noise. They are really phenomenal. This one has a metal shield in between the primary and the secondary windings. There's something known as capacitive coupling on very high frequencies that can get through isolation transformers. And so this has that additional feature with the uh, Faraday cage between the primary and the secondary windings that is separately grounded. So this is an especially quiet uh, isolation transformer, not just an operation where it's a very, very quiet hum. This is something that definitely could be used in your audio room. 
maybe, you know, along with the equipment stack, but if it was off in the side of the room, the corner of the room, you wouldn't be able to hear this running, which is what's really nice about the Oniacs is they're really quiet and pretty much the best form of power conditioning that you could get for audio equipment besides maybe like one of those uh, AC regenerators from like PS Audio or an online type UPS, which is also a power regenerator. And what's nice about the Oniacs is you can often find larger, higher power units. Like this 2 kilowatt unit would handle most people's stereos. Uh, even if you had amplifiers and equipment that was technically the maximum draw was beyond 2 kilowatts, the actual times that you would be drawing that much power continuously would probably be pretty rare. And so this really could handle most people's uh, audio systems. And that's kind of what I got it for, was that you can have your whole home theater set up uh, plugged into this unit and you know you have excellent surge protection and power protection. Part of the surge protection comes from the, the nature of an isolation transformer where if you have a large spike of voltage, it's going to cause that magnetic field to try to proportionally increase due to the higher voltage and that provides a uh, slowing down, a dampening effect. So instead of being a really sharp spike, it rounds it off. And then there's one particular feature where these have what is advertised as within a 10 volt let through on a 6,000 volt ring wave, which is how they kind of test the surge protection. And that's real telling about the type of surge protection this has. It not only does it have the transformer, I should probably open it up. Well, before I open it up, I'll show on the back side here. But it has what's known as avalanche diode. And so instead of like the weird metal oxide varistors, which are pretty much in all equipment that has surge protection I've seen that is not like something special on heavy duty like this uses uh, metal oxide varistors, which due to their nature, they have to be set very high, like 300 or 330 volts is a standard, 400 or 500 volts. Many times, if you look at the bottom of any power strip that you have, that's a surge protector power strip, it'll say, you know, 330 volts. This will regulate within 10 volts. And I found another document that basically stated at anything above 200 volts, it will block. And so it uses something known as avalanche diodes. Now, the second issue with metal oxide varistors is many power strips you may see have a protection light. And so what happens is, is when whatever surge comes through and that may blow out those metal oxide varistors, will also burn out that LED light. That's how the protection light works. As you get a surge, it blows out the protection circuits and the LED along with it. So the LED is then turned off and you know that it's been hit by a surge and it's no longer a good surge protector. Avalanche diodes don't suffer from that. This thing could be hit by a hundred surges a day for years on end. And as long as the surge wasn't so big that it actually just physically fried everything, um, the avalanche diodes are just excellent. They just will clamp down and they can just take repeated hit after hit. Uh, also, they are super, super fast acting. Now, the nice thing about these big industrial ones is it just takes standard size receptacles. And see, I have a multi-piece plate, so you can configure the receptacles however you want to. I have a couple of extreme heavy-duty um, receptacles here that clamp so hard onto the wires that they're it's almost at a point where I'm going to have to replace them with some other specification grade receptacles. Can't really demonstrate it, but if you plugged in a lamp cord in one of these sockets and then tried to pull it out via the wire, it would rip the wire from the plug and it would remain in these. So they make receptacles that are almost to the point of unusable. They clamp so hard. I have this other gray one here. And this I actually have connected to a separate filtering unit inside this. So this is isolated. So the isolation transformer provides an excellent amount of uh, electrical protection. And then these two sockets are basically connected right into it. This has an additional filter that's connected to the transformer. That way I can plug something like the receiver in here or the power amplifier, which is what's most likely going to be affected by power noise, into a separate socket that is... Uh, isolated has its own separate filtering that is uh, apart from the two main sockets. And so let me pause it and open this up. Almost forgot to mention on these larger 1AC units, the power switch is also an integrated circuit breaker. So if you overload it, the power switch goes into like this mid position, you know it's blown, you have to turn it off and reset it. But that is nice. They also have another level of redundancy. 
So say uh, you wanted to have one socket where you wanted to have a little bit less uh, power going through or you were concerned about that, you can take th these out and these are the standard little, uh, the small size, or I should say medium. There's like the really common what's in microwaves and appliances. These are the slightly larger ones. And these are uh, fuses. So it has separate fuses for each socket so you can adjust I uh, have a, just an additional level of protection. I have 15 amp fuses in here now, but you could put a 5 amp fuse in there in case you just wanted to have something that you made sure if there was any issues, uh, it would blow out before it would have a chance to run kilowatts of power through it. And that's the one thing is these uh, isolation transformers do have a huge reserve of power because they have a large magnetic field that's been built up in them. And so when you turn on a power amplifier, you'll notice that your lights dim a little bit less just because it, uh, the initial impulse was supplied by the isolation transformer, of course, the huge capacitors that are in here. Let me go and open it up. Now, originally this came with a 14 gauge power cord and I didn't like it. So I did upgrade it with a longer and a bit more useful for me, uh, 12 gauge power cord. And this is definitely unplugged. Let me go and turn this. This thing is so heavy over 50 pounds because you have a giant transformer in here, a truly large transformer. You know you have a big transformer when the terminals on the transformer itself aren't just wires that come out or crimped. These are screw down terminals right on the transformer wire itself. The wire is that thick. Now one thing you can tell on any isolation transformer, if you look carefully, some like that power bar have an extra little power winding to drive their circuits. That uh, APC that I reviewed, that was really nice because they actually had a completely second or an additional separate transformer just to run the power electronics. It was really nice. But you can see, you know, they'll have input terminals, output terminals. And on this one, you can see something weird, which is this green ground wire coming out of the bottom of the transformer. So if you ever open one of these up and you see an odd ground wire coming out of the transformer, you know it has what's known as a Faraday cage in between the primary and secondary. The only real upgrade they could do beyond what they've already done is put a copper shield around the outside of the transformer as well like they do in high fidelity audio equipment. This has a couple of very large tall uh, metal can capacitors for additional smoothing and for handling surge. They also have a resistor between them, and I'm not exactly sure why that is, but we have one, this is the, from the factory, it was one uh, that was directly connected to the secondary. And these are both run in parallel, but the second one in parallel ha has this resistor in between, and I think that's just to provide, you know, just a little bit of power limitation. It may help with self-discharge once you open it up. Circuit breaker power switch. And if I zoom in a little bit, it might be easier to see because I'm not going to be able to lift this up. Is they have this, they call it the VG2000. And anyway, that VG2000 is the uh, surge protection. And of course, it's on the input side. But you know surge protection is something different when it isn't like little flat discs. It's a big box like this with the uh, both the hot and the neutral line going to it and then a separate ground wire coming out of it. So I believe that's what is an avalanche diode based type of surge protection. It could really be considered just a volt, a 200 volt voltage limiter. And whenever the voltage goes too high, I believe it shunts anything back into the ground wire. So anyway, that was just a look inside one of these larger units, and it really is just like any other isolation transformer. And these, these can be, you know, if you decouple the neutral from the ground, which these come from the factory because of uh, electrical regulations, but it kind of defeats the true isolation nature. Uh, so you do need to do that modification. Other than that, uh, it's just a big version of an isolation transformer. It just happens to be a little bit nicer because it has a Faraday cage. Um, or a virtual Kelvin ground, so it is even quieter, and of course, very large output output capacitors and a higher quality uh, surge protection. And these things are neat. You know, I've run power tools off of these with you know brush type motors, vacuum cleaners, because this thing's huge, two kilowatts. It'll run in pretty much any appliance in your house. 
including your microwave convection ovens, stereo systems, I mean, and all of that equipment. This would make a microwave last a lot longer uh, just because the lifespan of a microwave's Megatron tube is based on the quality of the power that it receives. Surprisingly enough, microwaves that seem to slowly die and then just don't keep food anymore um, are because the Megatron tube was low quality and they had a low quality power supply that sent a bunch of noise to the Megatron tube and just caused it to eat itself away and burn up. Where I have, and someday I'll do a review, I have a an old microwave from the 80s. Um, but it's different than what they, you know, they don't quite make them like they used to unless you want to spend a huge amount of money. And I have a microwave that weighs 85 pounds and heats food just like it used to, you know, almost 40 years ago. It's crazy. I've never even changed the internal light bulb. And things like this can really uh, make a big difference. When I run power tools, uh, brush type power tools, you can actually see less sparking on the tool. The motor runs a little bit cooler. They seem to just have a little bit more torque. Really, power tools love running off of these kinds of things because it's like its own dedicated little uh, power supply, basically. Anyway, sorry for another long video about one of these ONIACs, but there is no video where it just kind of talks about them like I'm doing here, particularly when it comes to these larger, uh, higher quality isolation transformers and what kind of sets them apart. Oh, and I almost forgot. Now, in copying machines and tele some televisions, but uh, I've taken apart a few copying machines. I like to because they're amazing. A copying machine uh, is one of the most mechanically complex machines most people will ever encounter. They have easily as many parts or more parts than a car does, literally, down to every last nut, bolt, and screw. Copying machines with the built-in collators that can do... Uh, you know, print on both sides of the sheet of paper have some amazing mechanics inside them. And they oftentimes have these heavy duty integrated uh, EMI filters, you know, noise, you know, noise filters. And so this is a big 15 amp one I got from a copying machine. It's actually a Delta. So it's a very high quality brand. So it's a Delta 15 amp EMI filter that I've hooked up to that one gray socket. So that's how I got a second or a separate totally isolated uh, filtering socket that I can just plug amplifiers into where the rest of the audio equipment gets plugged into the normal sockets and it has all the baseline uh, noise filtering but then this socket is literally both it's doubly filtered from the mains as well as being uh, isolated from any noise that may come back from say switching power supplies that are in a blu-ray player and that's a big deal. All those phone chargers and switching power supplies that are now plugged in the circuits, switching power supplies is constantly at, you know, 10, 20, 30 kilohertz, just turning on and off the power. And uh, that they generate a huge amount of noise. And so do brush motors because the brushes are constantly engaging and disengaging. And that's where a lot of noise comes from. Anyway, I'm going to end this kind of review and discussion about this here. And uh, thank everybody who has subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to the Caddis Maximus channel. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.